Hey everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to check out my website listed down below, corinneblackstone.com. There's lots of great stuff over there. You can sign up for my newsletter as well as get some SVGs and things like that, free and paid. Lots of great stuff to check out. I also have a bunch of new blogs that you may want to check out that have some great information and resources. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make little felt eyes. I use mine for crochet, but you can use them for a lot of different things. They're super easy, super fun, and I'm going to show you guys how to set them up in your Cricut, how to cut them and press them, and how to make sure that they're going to adhere to whatever you're using them with really, really well. We're going to use Cricut Design Space for this, but you can do these on Silhouette, StarCraft, any of the cutters that you have, and they're super fun and super easy. Also, if you're somebody who likes to sell things, these sell really, really well, and you can really make your own personality with them, so it's really fun. Let's get started. I can't wait to show you guys how to make these. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. So here in Cricut Design Space is how we're going to make our felt eyes. This is super easy, super fun. The biggest thing is knowing how large you need your eyes to be. So I recommend cutting out a few templates on cardstock before you decide the size of your eyes because everybody kind of prefers something a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply just starting with shapes. That's all you need to make these eyes. It's so simple, so easy. And you don't even need Cricut um, Design Space Access because pretty much every shape you'll want or can use you can either get here or on Google. So we're gonna start with a simple circle. Now I've done these before, so I know that about 1.3 inches for a circle is perfect for the size plushie that I make. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with 1.3. So once I've done that, all I simply need to do is duplicate my circle. And this is where you really can kind of bring your own personality into this. So the first thing I do is I'm going to change this circle to black because that's the color eye I'm going to use for this. Now you can make any color eye that you want with your felt, so really up to you. This part of my eye is going to be white, so all I'm simply going to do is just change it to white. Now for this, I'm going to make this circle much smaller because this is kind of going to be like the reflection of the eye. So I'm just going to place that part where I want it. I'm going to duplicate this piece one more time, this circle. And I'm going to make it even smaller now so that I can have that second little piece of reflection. Now, again, you can put that anywhere that you want it on to your design. Next thing that I want to do is make sure I attach my two white circles. That's going to hold them in place so that I don't have to try to place the tiny circle and the big circle the same distance apart that I have them here. It's going to hold them in place. Now, all I want to do is select the two white circles and the black circle and group. That's going to allow me to move it around my screen without losing the spacing on everything. Now we're going to need two eyes. So what I'm going to do is click duplicate. And what I want to do, because I don't necessarily want them looking the same way, I'm going to go ahead and use the flip option to flip one of them horizontal. Now you have a set of eyes, each facing a different way. And when you go to cut them out, they're going to cut out perfectly. So you won't have to really think too much about anything. Now, the next thing that I want to do, let's say we want to make another different kind of set of eyes. Super easy to do. Just duplicate your design, the first one. Ungroup it, and then you can either erase these two white circles or just kind of move them off to the side if you want to use them again. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of them because we can just start all over. We'll do another design. So I want to do one with a circle around the eye. So this is really fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this black circle twice. So I should have three of them. So one, two, and three. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of these two circles so that you can see them better, but you don't have to do this. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size of one circle to 1.2. I'm going to reduce the size of this other circle to just one. What I want to do now is I want to place this circle, the yellow, inside of the orange. What you can do to make sure you have them perfectly even is select both of those circles, go up to a line and center them. Then simply use the slice option down here in the lower right hand corner. Once you've sliced them, it's going to create a couple of different circles for you to use. So we're going to get rid of this yellow circle and we're going to get rid of the center orange piece right here because we don't need those. We only need this outside orange. 
what I'm going to do is line that up with my circle for the eye. And now you'll see that you have this perfect little circle that you can use to create a colored eye. Now again, you can make another circle and do whatever you'd like to inside here, whether you want to add a little shine or whatever. It's up to you. But again, this is sort of just kind of how I do things. And you can kind of play around and figure out how you want your eyes to look. So it's really up to you. There's no wrong way. There's no right way to do these. They're really fun and really easy. So I'm going to go ahead and cut both of these types of eyes for you. But I think I'm going to change that out and I'm going to change it out for, let's do a little star. That would be super cute. So again, you can use like shapes and stuff to make your eyes a little more expressive. I'm going to change that to the same orange. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a little star right in his eye. And then I think I'm going to add a little reflection with a little circle. So again, you can see that I'm just using shapes, just using shapes, colors, different designs to make the eyes what I want them to be. So I'm just sizing circles down, sizing shapes down and sort of playing around with it and seeing what I like. Now there's no right or wrong way to do this. Now I don't necessarily think I like the orange star. So let's see what it looks like with a white star. I think I like that better. And I think I'm going to make the star just a smidge smaller. I think that looks pretty good. I like the style. So again, what I want to do is select the star and the circle and attach them. That way they don't move, they don't do anything, and I don't have to worry about it. Again, selecting the entire design and grouping it. And then I want to duplicate and flip. That way I have the eyes facing different ways. Now again, you can absolutely have them face the same way so it looks like it's looking off into the side. This is really however you want to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and have them so they're kind of the same direction here. So this is really simple, very easy to do. Now all you have to do is click make it. And I'm going to show you all the pieces. So you have your white, which is not a lot. doesn't take a lot of HTV to do these. Here are your felt pieces. And then here are the orange circles. Now I will usually make more felt pieces than this actually um, is showing just so you don't waste as much. But for this tutorial, I'll usually make a lot of eyes at once, but I'm just going to make these four eyes just to show you how to do it. Now we are going to need to change out our mats and our cut settings when we make this. I'm going to use Starcraft Softflex to do the white and the orange. Let's do it in some glitter. And then this is going to be our felt. So the first thing that we'll need to do is select everyday iron on and then I'll show you guys how to do the felt and how to do the orange. But the first thing we need to do is set up our felt. Now this step for your felt is going to be pretty life changing as far as a not getting fuzzies on your mat and also it's going to make it a lot easier to get them to stick permanently to your crochet items or whatever you're putting it on. So I use heat and bond ultra hold. I got this at Joann's. I'll link it below. But this is all it is. It's just a big sheet of a bonding agent for fabric. So you can see it's pretty big. It has two sides. It has this side. It's very like textured. And then this side is paper. So what you want to do, and this is how I do it, but you can do it any way you want. I usually will flip it over paper side up because it's a little easier to write on. And then I take my felt and I line it up to my heat and bond and I do have a little overhang around it uh, just to kind of like give me extra because I don't want any of the felt. Then I very carefully, which that was terrible, I cannot draw today apparently. We are not doing well on the drawing. I just don't, it doesn't have to be a perfect line. I just basically kind of trace out where my felt is. Again, does not have to be perfect and that way I can kind of cut out that square of the heat and bond. So all I'm going to do is just cut along the line again my terrible terrible line and don't worry that you drew on it it's not going to affect anything because this paper does come right off so we'll just go ahead and cut out this section now if I was just doing like a couple eyes I would usually just cut out a couple inches and then just trim my felt to fit but we'll do the whole sheet because that's normally how I do it so we'll go ahead and do that make sure that you do package this back up because you can use this a ton there's like a whole yard here in this one you can get much larger packages but for me this is like perfectly fine for how many eyes i make now this has directions which is why i never throw out the backing like the packaging because it does have the directions so what it says is to pre-wash all materials which you don't have to do especially if you're doing felt you can kind of ignore that now for this we are going to use our heat press 
but we are gonna use our mini heat press, our little mini press to make our eyes. So what you'll wanna do is you wanna place the um, paper with the textured side against your fabric. So you wanna make sure that it's against your fabric and you wanna to try to line it up best you can. That looks pretty good. It's gonna move because I'm gonna put it on my heat press anyways. Then it says to heat it on medium setting, so usually about 285, so I do it like I do with StarCraft, and you just heat it for about two seconds. Now you can either do this with your big heat press or you can use your mini. It's really up to you. I like to just use my big heat press when I'm making like a big piece like this, but if I was just doing um, a small part, I would use my mini. That's all you have to do and it's done. So it's really simple. I'm gonna go turn my heat press on, get it ready, and then we can press. So now that I've gotten my heat press set, it's at 285. I have a piece of parchment paper down just to protect my press in case this shifts at all or like ends up getting any of the adhesive off of the felt. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure this is covering the felt best it can. And then I've got this set. I probably should up the pressure a little bit because I usually use a pressing pillow. So I'm just gonna turn the dial on the back to up the pressure. And then I'm just gonna do a really super quick press, just a couple seconds. Go ahead and peel that back. And then you're gonna let this cool fully before you peel off the paper. If you don't, the adhesive will come off with it, but you can see what I was talking about with the adhesive getting on things. That's why I put this parchment paper down, super helpful. And then honestly, once it's cool, the adhesive that might've gotten on the parchment paper, just wipe it right off. It comes off, no problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool off and then we'll peel the paper and then we're gonna be ready to cut it. So for the last step for the heat and bond, just let it cool and then all you have to do is peel off the paper. Now it's not gonna probably peel very well right here where it's not over the felt. And you can always just trim this off if you want to. It's really up to you. I'll just go ahead and trim it off. But if you leave it on, it won't do any harm either. Um, but I like to just make sure I get this paper peeled off. You don't wanna leave the paper on when it's on your mat. Trust me, that is not a good time trying to peel that paper off. So you just peel this off and then you'll see, and sometimes it'll rip like that, totally okay. Not a big deal. Um, you'll see that you have a shiny to your felt. You see that shiny back? That is the heat and bond adhesive. And like I said, sometimes it'll kind of shred a little bit like this, especially when it has a fold in it like this one did. Um, so you'll just kind of have to go back through and peel those off. It's okay, no big deal. They come off. You just kind of have to work your way kind of through it, but it's fine. No big deal. This happens from time to time with these. So sometimes if you're having trouble, you can always use your pin pen as well. But there we go. So our felt is ready. Now you're gonna cut this with the heat and bond side down. So it's gonna be felt side up. But first thing we have to do is cut out our StarCraft soft flex. So we'll get that and then we'll get our glitter out as well, get our machine all ready. And we're gonna be ready to make something really cool. So I've gotten all my materials out. So the first thing I'm gonna use is the StarCraft soft flex. And I'm just using a scrap. The scraps are great for this because these really don't take up a lot of space. So this is a great thing to use when you're doing scraps. Don't come at me for using a blue mat. This mat is brand spanking new. I just cleaned it minus the couple dog hairs that got on it. So it is sticky enough. Now I will say I do need to change my tool. I just realized I had my old tool in. I was just using the uh, rotary blade for something else. But we'll need that in a second. So we'll keep it over to the side. But we're gonna put our fine point blade in and just let this cut out our StarCraft Softflex first. And now that it's done with that, we're gonna go ahead and unload. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this off. So make sure it cut everything. It looks like it did, so we're good there. This mat we're gonna use again when we cut our glitter, so I'm just gonna put the plastic sheet back on it to keep it clean, and I'm gonna set it over to the side. So now we are going to be using our felt with our heat and bond. So I'm gonna show you how to load that. I like to use my strong grip mat for this, and I like to slide it under my, my, my machine like I always do. And then all I simply do is just line it up the top of the mat, and then just like I do with vinyl, I slide it on down the mat. Make sure that's on there really, really well. Like I said, heat and bond side goes down. So I'll go ahead and set this down for a second. I'm gonna take you back over to the machine so I can show you the felt setting that we're going to use. So over here on the Cricut, what you're gonna do like on your design space screen, click browse all materials. Then I just simply search the word felt. Now I like to kind of use a felt that's gonna cut with the rotary blade and I have found there's certain ones that work better than others. For me, the acrylic felt works okay, but you'll see here that it's gonna tell you what tools you need. So I like to use the felt acrylic fabric one. I like to use the rotary blade 
And because I have the heat and bond, I do more pressure. That's what works for me. I highly recommend doing some test cuts before you commit to choosing your cut setting, but that's the setting that works for me. So it might be a good one for you guys to start on and see if that works for you as well. Now back over at the Cricut, we need to change out our fine point blade for our rotary blade. So what I'm gonna do is I open to clamp B and I'm gonna line up my gold gear with the gold gear in the machine for my rotary blade and just go ahead and slide that in. Next thing I'm gonna do is load my mat with my felt and it's gonna go ahead and check my tool and then it's gonna cut out our little circles. So once it's done, before I ever remove this from the machine, I like to try to make sure that it cuts. So what you can do is take the corner of your felt here and peel it up and just work your way over to where your circles are and you'll see that your circles are cut. Can you kind of see where it stayed on the mat? So we're good to go. You can peel that off and then I'll close this so you guys can see this better. So because this is felt, you can just simply peel it up like this and you'll see that you don't really have any fuzzies left on your mat from your felt because we used the heat and bond. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and peel each one of these little guys. Now they can be a little difficult. So just like when you do cardstock, you can turn your mat and just kind of peel them off. And you'll see we have a minimal fuzziness. A lot of that fuzzy that was already on there before because I didn't put heat and bond on it once and that was a bad idea. So I'm going to go ahead and set these over to the side. Now the strong grip mat is going to be too much for our glitter. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy away. Now, I couldn't find um, orange glitter, so we'll go ahead and use gold. I think it's really, really pretty. This is the Caesar glitter um, of HTV, and it's beautiful. It cuts on glitter, iron on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my blue mat again. It's plenty sticky for this right now. And I'm just going to do that same kind of little trick where I hide it under my door. If you guys have watching for a while, you know this is like the way I always load my materials. This is my favorite little hack. So I'll go ahead and do that. i got to switch my setting to glitter iron on and change out my tool. So I'm going to just open clamp B, pull my tool out, and replace it with my fine point blade. All right, I'm going to go change that cut setting and we can get ready to cut. So now we're on to pressing our eyes. So what I do is I use a pressing pillow and then I put a piece of parchment paper down because when these get warm, the adhesive does activate just a little bit, not enough to like damage it, but um, I did get a little bit on my pressing mat. So I like to put parchment paper down under it and then I kind of spread these guys out. So what I did was I cut out all of our little pieces. So we have all of our little eye pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and line them up where I want them on my felt eye. And you want to try to make sure they look pretty even to each other. So like if there's like a lot of space between the top and the bottom, you want to just try to get those pretty straight and even. So then I have the little circles, which I prefer to press the out outer ring before I press the inner ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these down and again, I just line them up with the felt. You can move them if you mess up, it's okay. No big deal. Then what you wanna do is have another piece of parchment paper to put over your eyes. That way you are not um, gonna damage them. You wanna have some sort of thing between your press and your HTV. So I'm doing StarCraft Soft Flex. So I have this set on the middle setting. This is the little mini press from Cricut. And I'm just pressing it for like eight to 10 seconds. And so then I'm gonna go ahead and do the next one at eight to 10 seconds. And then the gold I will do pretty quickly because it's only gonna get pressed twice. This one just gets pressed once, but because we're gonna press the gold twice, we don't need to do quite as much of a press as it would like normally require. But you can see that the eye fits perfectly under this entire press. You could actually fit two eyes under one, but for this video, I wanted to give you guys enough of a view. So once you're done, what you're gonna do is come in and just peel off your carrier sheets from your eyes. Now, because this one wasn't pressed as much, we may need to be a little more careful on the gold glitter. 
because we're gonna come back and press those again. So you can move these ones off, but like see how they're kind of stuck? You can just peel them off and it didn't damage it, it just kind of activated it a little bit. But when you go to hot melt glue these on, when you use hot the hot glue, it'll activate that um, adhesive again and it's going to hold those really, really well. So we'll do these ones. These are the ones with the little stars. I think these are so cute. So again, I kind of attached everything to make it easier when you go to put these on. So you just sort of line them up where you want them. And again, do whatever you want. Do the eyes however you want, whatever like little personality traits you want to give your little guys. You do this the way you want. There's no right or wrong design. It's all up to you and the way you want them to look. But this is super easy, super fun. You can go crazy, you can do different shaped eyes, but it's really inexpensive to do it this way and these stay on. Like once you've got them on, they are on. So those are pressed, so we'll go ahead and peel this. Both those carrier sheets come off and these ones are done. So again, you've got little felt eyes. Like super simple, super easy, really, really fun. And you can see we've got the two different styles. I'll hold the two different styles up so you can kind of see. One's a little more simple, one's a little more fun. You can really use any kind of HTV that you want for these. You definitely want to use HTV. Um, if you're using regular vinyl, it will peel off, but the HTV will stay on the felt. You can use any color felt that you want. This is just felt that I got from Michaels. The heat and bond is super important for this to make them really easy to stick. And I'm gonna show you a set that I did on um, one of my stuffies and you can see how it looks. So this is one of the little stuffies that I did and you can see his little felt eyes. He's got little hearts. This pattern is from Katie Dids. I'll link the pattern down below for you guys on Etsy. Super fun. I used uh, Premier yarn. This is their Parfait Chunky. But you can see the eyes and then I'm going to put the little star ones over them just so you can kind of see the different personality that he gets with the different like kind of eye. Look at that. It's like a totally different little look. Super fun. Really, really cute. This is just an easy thing that you can do. And then, like I said, I've got a ton of different styles that you can do. You can really make any kind that you want. So then if you wanted to do a more simple eye, that would be what he would look like with the more simple eye. So you can see there's lots that you can do and how it changes up their personality depending on what style you go with. Now, this is easy, fun, and simple, so I hope that you guys will try these out. They're super fun, and I think that you guys can really do a lot with these little felt eyes. Now you can see, there they are, all nice up and close. And again, changing out the colors, changing out the finishes, the shapes, the sizes, whatever you need to do, but they're super easy, super fun, and I hope that you guys picked up some tips and tricks on how to make your own felt eyes in this tutorial. If you have any questions about this or any other crafting things, let me know in those comments down below. I always love to hear from you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, happy crafting!